LGM-30 Minuteman is an American land-based intercontinental ballistic missile in service with the Air Force Global Strike Command. As of 2021, the LGM-30G Minuteman III version is the only land-based ICBM in service in the United States and represents the land leg of the U.S. nuclear triad, along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile and nuclear weapons carried by long-range strategic bombers. The development of the United States Navy UGM-27 Polaris, which addressed the same role, allowed the Air Force to modify the Minuteman, boosting its accuracy enough to attack hardened military targets, including Soviet missile silos. By the 1970s, 1,000 Minuteman missiles were deployed. Hall's ultimate plan was to build a number of integrated missiles, farms, that included factories, missile silos, transport and recycling. Systems in a missile would detect failures, at which point it would be removed and recycled, while a newly built missile would take its place. Ramo Wooldridge pressed for a system with higher accuracy, but Hall countered that the missile's role was to attack Soviet cities, and that a force which provides numerical superiority over the enemy will provide a much stronger deterrent than a numerically inferior force of greater accuracy. 154 Hall was known for his friction with others, and in 1958 Schriever removed him from the Minuteman project and sent him to the UK to oversee deployment of the Thor IRBM. 152 On his return to the US in 1959, Hall retired from the Air Force, but received his second Legion of Merit in 1960 for his work on solid fuels. Previous missile designs normally used two single-purpose and very simple computers, one ran the autopilot that kept the missile flying along a programmed course, and the second compared the information from the inertial platform to the target coordinates and sent any needed corrections to the autopilot. In the shorter term, looking to rapidly increase the number of missiles in its force, Minuteman was given crash development status starting in September 1958. These used long and skinny arrow-like shapes that provided aerodynamic lift in the high atmosphere, and could be fitted to existing missiles like Minuteman. Although Minuteman would not deploy a boost glide warhead, the extra space proved invaluable in the future, as it allowed the missile to be extended and carry more fuel and payload. 46. If the Soviets improved the accuracy of their missiles this would present a serious threat to the Air Force's bombers and missiles, but none at all to the Navy's submarines. If the role of the missile was to present an unassailable threat to the Soviet population, Polaris was a far better solution than Minuteman. The Army argued that upgraded Soviet missiles might be able to attack U.S. missiles in their silos, and Zeus would be able to blunt such an attack. Zeus was expensive and the Air Force said it was more cost-effective to build another Minuteman missile. Minuteman's selection as the primary Air Force ICBM was initially based on the same second strike logic as their earlier missiles, that the weapon was primarily one designed to survive any potential Soviet attack and ensure they would be hit in return. The computers were upgraded with more memory, allowing them to store information for eight targets, which the missile crews could select among almost instantly, greatly increasing their flexibility. Newer bombers with better survivability, like the B-70, cost many times more than the Minuteman, and, in spite of great efforts through the 1960s, became increasingly vulnerable to surface-to-air missiles. After the first batch of Minuteman eyes were fully developed and ready for stationing, the United States Air Force had originally decided to put the missiles at Vandenberg AFB in California, but before the missiles were set to officially be moved there it was discovered that this first set of Minuteman missiles had defective boosters which limited their range from their initial 6,300 miles to 4,300 miles. Each of the bases had 150 missiles emplaced, F.E. Warren had 200 of the Minuteman IB missiles. These newer missiles were later deployed into modified Minuteman silos. The Guidance Replacement Program, initiated in 1993, replaced the disk-based D-37D flight computer with a new one that uses radiation-resistant semiconductor RAM. The Minuteman III missiles used D-37D computers and completed the 1000 missile deployment of this system. The existing Minuteman III missiles have been further improved over the decades in service, with more than $7 billion spent in the 2010s to upgrade the 450 missiles. The newer system extends the service life of the Minuteman missile beyond the year 2030 by replacing aging parts and assemblies with current, high-reliability technology while maintaining the current accuracy performance. The LGM-118A Peacekeeper ICBM, which was to have replaced the Minuteman, was retired in 2005 as part of START-2. A total of 450 LGM-30G missiles are emplaced at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, Wyoming, Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, and Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana. All Minuteman I and Minuteman II missiles have been retired, 
the United States prefers to keep its MIRV deterrence on submarine-launched Trident nuclear missiles in 2014, the Air Force decided to put 50 Minuteman III silos into warm, unarmed status, taking up half of the 100 slots in America's allowable nuclear reserve. Studying the problem, even more, SAC realized that in order to prevent the U.S. from launching all 1,000 Minuteman ICBMs, the Soviets did not have to target all 1,000 Minuteman missile silos. The Soviets needed to launch only a disarming decapitation strike against the 100 Minuteman LCCs, the command and control sites, in order to prevent the launch of all Minuteman ICBMs. Even though the Minuteman ICBMs would have been left unscathed in their missile silos following an LCC decapitation strike, the Minuteman missiles could not be launched without a command and control capability. The Operation Big Star performance test was from 20 June to 27 August 1960 at Hill Air Force Base, and the 4062nd Strategic Missile Wing was organized 1 December 1960 for three planned missile train squadrons, each with ten trains carrying three missiles per train. During the Kennedy-McNamara cutbacks, the DOD announced that it has abandoned the plan for a mobile Minuteman ICBM. The concept called for 600 to be placed in service 450 in silos and 150 on special trains, each train carrying five missiles. After Kennedy announced on 18 March 1961, that the three squadrons were to be replaced with fixed base squadrons, Strategic Air Command discontinued the 4062nd Strategic Missile Wing on 20 February 1962. The missile fired at 8,000 feet, and the 10-second engine burn carried the missile to 20,000 feet again before it dropped into the ocean. The U.S. Air Force has considered using some decommissioned Minuteman missiles in a satellite launching role. During the 1980s, surplus Minuteman missiles were used to power the Conestoga rocket produced by Space Services Inc. More recently, converted Minuteman missiles have been used to power the Minotaur line of rockets produced by Orbital Sciences. L3 Communications is currently using SR-19 SRBs, Minuteman II second-stage solid rocket boosters, as delivery vehicles for a range of different re-entry vehicles as targets for the THAAD and ASIP interceptor missile programs as well as radar testing. United States The United States Air Force has been the only operator of the Minuteman ICBM weapon system, currently with three operational wings and one test squadron operating the LGM-30G. The active inventory in FY 2009 is 450 missiles and 45 missile alert facilities. Each Minuteman wing is assisted logistically by a nearby missile support base. All retired between 3 December 1991 and April 1994, with destruction of silos and alert facilities finishing in 1996. 400th Missile Squadron Grand Forks AFB, North Dakota LGM 30F Minuteman 2. 1965-73 LGM 30G Minuteman 3, 1972-98 446th Missile Squadron 447th Missile Squadron 448th Missile Squadron 321st Missile Wing LGM 30 Minuteman Missile Launch Sites inactivated by BRAC 1995. Missiles reassigned to 341 Stone SMW, however in 1995 it was decided to retire the Grand Forks missiles, the last missile was pulled from its silo in June 1998. The Minuteman Missile National Historic Site in South Dakota preserves a launch control facility and a launch facility under the control of the National Park Service.